So y'all seen the rigging video the other day where we went and picked the boat up from the actual Camus factory up there in Ashland, Tennessee. Then we came to Wee Daddy Marine and got it rigged up and everything was ready. Now we're gonna walk through today and kind of show y'all the entire layout of the Camus. I did go with the Camus CX-20. We're gonna show y'all the entire layout of it. Some of the unique things on it, we're gonna show you how the way that I rigged it, my personal touches I put on here, and we're gonna show y'all even some of the standard features, you know, there's certain things in a bass boat that you just need and a bass boat just has to have. And this boat has all these, has all of those, and it has a bunch of unique fe features we're going to go over as well. So it's pretty cool. We'll show you all exactly what's going on with this thing. But right here on the business end of it, obviously we got to have dual eight foot power pole blades. Me being a shallow water guy primarily, I don't know how I ever fish without these things. As soon as I get in a boat that doesn't have one, I, sh I miss them big time. So dual eight foot power pole blades. We have a... 250 four stroke mercury pro xs my last one i had i put it through the absolute ringer love this thing and then we've got a th marine atlas hydraulic jack plate right there obviously we have the um, hydraulic steering if you have a motor this big and this powerful you absolutely have to have hydraulic steering the prop right here this is the prop that comes standard on a Cayman cx20 and this is actually the prop that comes standard on most 20 foot boats this is a mercury 24 pitch fury prop so you can see the Fury, what the Fury is, is the Fury is a harder, thinner, kind of a eared prop. And what that does is it gives that boat a little, like having those thinner ears and having more, I don't really know what it does, but the Fury for some reason gives boats a little bit more lift and your boat is able to turn this Fury at a little bit higher RPMs than it can turn most other props. So that's why we go with the Fury, get a little more speed, especially whenever you've got the boat loaded. One cool feature of the Camus that you don't see in every boat is it's actually got these sponsons on the back. These are kind of just floats that are built into the boat. And what that does is it helps you plane off and it helps whenever you've come off of plane, whenever you, you know, you set the rear end of that boat down, it doesn't get a ton of, of water washed over into it. It just helps with flotation on the back of the boat because this is where you have all your batteries. You've got a 550 pound engine. You've got your power poles back here. So this is where all the weight is on the boat. So having these little sponsons and having these floats, what those do is just help, you know, float that up and make it a little bit more uh, ma maintainable whenever you're coming off pad and going on to pad. So about to hop up in the boat now, kind of give you all a walkthrough of the battery compartment and the whole back deck. So let's hop up in there. This back compartment or the battery compartment, whatever you want to call it, this is actually one of my favorite features on the boat. It's just super wide open. And you're starting to see that more and more with a lot of boat brands now, is they're just trying to make this back compartment as wide open as possible. But Camus took it to an entire another level. See, I've got three 12 volt decode lithium batteries right here. I've got my 31 AGM cranking battery, my charger, my power pole pumps, everything back in here. And it all looks super clean, super neat. And I've got tons of space and I can get to anything as fast as possible. For me, fishing as much as I do, traveling as much as I do, you're just gonna have issues throughout the year, no matter what it is, or you know, if you think you don't, or how much precaution you take, you're just gonna have some issues. And being able to get to whatever's causing me problems as quickly as possible is a big advantage. One thing they did to make the boat just look a little bit more cleaner, a little bit neater, is you've got these little hatches. And you can see as soon as you open up that hatch, you can see all your hoses, you can see your bilge pumps, all that type of stuff. You can get to it extremely quickly. And it just keeps it looking a whole lot neater, a whole lot cleaner in here. And you just got this one built in right here behind the live wells. You can get all your live well pumps. You can get to your pump outs, your you know pump ins, your recirculate pumps, all that type of stuff. You can get to it extremely quickly. But just closing that little door right there just makes it look so much cleaner and so much neater. So really cool little addition that I've never seen in another bass boat. It may be in one, but I've never seen it. Put all my stuff back in here. This compartment right here, these two back compartments behind the driver's seat and behind the passenger seat, these are kind of standard on all bass boats. You know, they all have tons of space in a bunch of them. We'll show y'all to them anyways. And this one right here, I've actually got a ton of tackle right now. I've been kind of playing with my weight configuration, trying to get the most performance out of the boat, the best speed. So I've got a bunch of tackle in here right now, but obviously you can fit a ton of stuff in there, whatever you need to do. Now, right here, this is where there's a lot of differences in this boat and a lot of other boats. We've had it on the water days, so there's a little bit of water in there, but these live wells are huge. Like I can hardly even reach to the bottom of them without like, I had to pull my sleeve all the way up to get to a fish in the bottom of them. They're super deep. And that's good because when you're making long runs or whatever, I can just hold a lot of water. It can do, it's gonna do, it's still, water in your live well is always gonna slosh. So the more that you have in there, it's gonna slosh back and forth. It's still gonna give those fish more water in there to not get quite as beat up. So having those super deep live wheels, that's gonna, you know, be a little bit better for the fish. You're trying to run an hour or however far. I always seem to run to the exact other end of the lake. So I always seem to have a long run. So those super deep live wheels always seem to help. One cool thing about these live wheels, and we'll show that to y'all, 
I got the Viper package in this boat and it actually has a camera and a lighting system in this live wheel. So let me open this back up. I'll show you all the camera. There's actually a camera right here on the top of the live wheel and I can, while I'm running down the lake, that camera actually shows me into the live wheel and I can see my water level on the boat. I can see the fish in there. I can see if I have a fish that's um, sitting up too high, kind of struggling. I can see if the water level is lower than I want it to be. And I've got a cool, fast water pickup, which I can actually pump more water into the live wheel if I need to. So really cool live wheel setup. Never seen a camera in a live wheel before. So a little bit interesting and I had to go ahead and get one in my, in my first boat like this. So let's move on up to the cockpit. One thing that I forgot to mention is there's a really unique net storage in here, at least for me. I've never seen a net storage like this. Granted, I don't get to use a net like we fish the Bass Smash Elite Series. We're not allowed to use a net, but I can see where this could be a huge advantage. You could just have a net that is, you know, like a hands length away at all times, but still be out of the way so you're not stepping on it, tripping over, stuff like that. So that's one of the biggest advantages or one of the biggest aggravating things I've ever seen with fish a bunch of you know team tournaments is the net is so difficult to store there's no good place for it you're always tripping over it you're getting everything hung on it so having it in there is going to take you a little more time to get it out and get it ready but at least it'll be close enough where if you do hook a big one on light line or whatever you can get the net in time so move from there to the little catch-all box got some money in there got a uh, gloves Got a peel bottle full of map cards in there. Got chapstick, got everything. That box has already became exactly what it's going to be for its entirety. It's kind of a catch-all. Anything that you want to throw in, you just won't, don't want to have in your pocket right now, or anything that you might use throughout the day, you just kind of throw it in there, it catches it, it piles up, and that's just what always happens in those boxes. So that's already what's happening in this box. So as you can see right here at the console, this is something that I actually didn't even realize I was going to get when I ordered this. But whenever I ordered the Viper package, I actually got an upgraded leather steering wheel, and I didn't even realize that until I was in the showroom at, at Weedow here, and I was messing with the Caymans to realize my steering wheel was a little bit different. So didn't know that came with it, but I got an upgraded steering wheel somehow. But a cool thing that Caymans did is they actually put this little glove box right here so you can fit your extra sunglasses in there, you can fit a phone in there, but it has some USB charging stuff in there so that, you know, you can put your phone in there and have it charging. That's really good for me because I'm always running GoPros, I'm always, you know, using my phone to film, whatever it is, just having the, more, the most USB kind of places you can have to charge everything that you have is just, you know, better in my opinion. This right here is actually, this is the Viper package, so you can see there's my live wheel, it's showing it right now. There's my port side live wheel. There's my starboard side live wheel. You can see it goes back to it. And then it's got all the gauges right here, RPM gauge, fuel level, all this type of stuff is on this Viper package. So it's re really cool, but it, I just thought it was an upgrade. So I had to get it for you know my first time to see how I liked it. See, I went with the precision sonar mounts right here. I got two Humbert Helix 12s at the console. That's pretty standard. A lot of people are running this exact same setup with 200 Helix 12. So got one for down imaging, one for mapping. You can see the maps on it right now. And then took my, I actually put my power pole uh, up and down switch on the side right here. So that if I'm sitting at the console, I can reach it from here. And if I'm sitting right there, just hooked a fish, whatever, I can get to it as well. So I wanted to put it right in the middle where I can get it from both sides. Now we're going to jump into the kind of front of the cockpit area. I know that a lot of this stuff is going to be pretty standard, but people want to see it anyway. So I'm going to show it to y'all. Right here on the side of the console, we do have a kind of a catch-all for tools. I've got some couple pairs of scissors and some spro pliers. That's actually Gamakatsu pliers in there. Got your little ruler right there. A lot of boats are coming, you know, very similar setup. Then we've got a cooler, just as kind of a standard cooler. As you can see, I've already got a bunch of black rifle coffee in there, some waters, all kinds of stuff. Then one thing I really like, I like it when boats take advantage of whatever kind of space they have. So we do have a little plastic drawer right here. Right now you can see it's January here in Alabama. We got some hot hands in there. We got some flashlight. We got to say uh, coal tags, coal system, all that type of stuff. This is just kind of that box where you may not use it every day or you might, but it's nice to have it close by whenever you do want to get something out of it. So I really like whenever boats use the space that is available. We'll go hop into the rod box right here. You can see this thing is kind of loaded full of rods right here. I've got a ton of 13 rods of reels in there. Probably got 20 or 25 rods of reels in there, so pretty loaded. You can see I got a big jig on, big spinner bait, big swim jig. It's definitely January, and we're trying to catch them on some of the cold water staple type of bait, so really cool. Both rod lockers are kind of same, but I will show y'all into the other one because it is a little bit different. And we're gonna jump into this center rod box right here, and you can see kind of how I've got everything set up. So, I just took out, I had all, I had this thing absolutely full of tackle all the way to the front. I just took it all out. That's what's in that back apartment right now. I had it, you know, I had, I could fit 10 of these um, Gamakatsu 3700 boxes right here in this little one. I put 
um, eight this way and I put two right here so I had ten in there then I had a couple more right there full of soft plastics and then my trays full of soft plastics up there I've got a couple spin rods off to the side I don't know how I like this yet spin rods are a very difficult thing to store for me anyways whenever you've got 20 25 bait casters in a box and you put spin rods in there it seems like as soon as you try to dig out a spin rod they're hung on 18 or 20 bait casters you've got in there and it's just very difficult to get them out so i'm going to try to store them off on their own this year try to store them away from everything and if i like this i may continue with this or i may put them in this right side rod locker i haven't 100 decided yet let me know what y'all do with y'all spin rods actually leave me a comment below do y'all put them in there, just tangle them up with your bait casters? Do you keep them off to the side? Do you store them different? Do you do something to keep them getting tangled? Because that's what I'm struggling with right now, and that's what I'm trying to do. So this is what I keep in my little boat right here. I've got a lot of room in here right now because it's not completely full, but it will be full come tournament time. This rod locker is going to be very similar to the other one. Open it up. I do have, right now, I have life jackets in there. I've got a paddle in there. I've got my nav light in there. I've got an extra 13 inception reel. I've got some... This, it says stick worms, there's actually swim baits in there. But this is a little tray, this thing actually pops out and you can kind of put whatever you want to in it, put it wherever you want to. That's really cool, I think I think it's, it's you know a cool use of space. If you wanted to, you could put some stuff up here and just keep it separate what's down there in the bottom. Might could put some snacks in there, some granola bars, whatever you want to put, some waters, whatever you want to put in there if you don't want to put it in the cooler. I think that'd be pretty cool. So, rod lockers are relatively standard you know most boats have stuff similar the the interesting part to the configuration of the front deck is what's in this center rod locker there's just a lot of different ways to configure your tackle so let's go i said the back end back there the motor the power poles all that stuff i said that was the business end let's take a look at where the partying happens this is the party side of the boat this is where all the goodies go this right here is where i've got my garmin ultra 106 this is a 10 inch garmin i've got a, 10, a 12 inch hummingbird helix and then i've got the motor guy tour I have, it's a 109 pound thrust. I've got the Garmin LiveScope transducer. I've got my stomp pads right there for my power poles. You can see I've got the pad right there to turn on my live wheels, whatever you want to do, all that type of stuff. Really clean setup. One thing I want to mention about the Camus that I, I didn't even know this was going to be a factor until I got it is whenever you stay on this trolling motor, you're extremely close to the actual tip of the front of the boat. And what that means is whenever you're trying to cast, trying to skip under docks, trying to do roll casts, you actually can clear the trolling motor and get out in front of the trolling motor and you, it makes it a little bit easier to skip dock. So I didn't even know that was going to be a factor until I got this boat and realized I was standing so much closer to the trolling motor. It just made it way easier to get those casts in there where I'm, where I'm trying to get them. So pretty cool setup. That's been the boat. Now, we tweak in a little bit of props, trying to get a little more performance out of it. We're going to see what we can do today and we're going to uh, kind of put a couple different props on here, tweak some stuff and let y'all know the result, how many RPMs we're getting and what kind of top speed. So about to dump this thing in the water. And see how fast she'll go. The walkthrough on the boat. This is the Cayman CX20 2022. I showed y'all how I rigged it up, everything on the inside of it. Let's just take a second to appreciate just how good this daggum all white boat turned out. Did I did this is a little bit selfish on myself? Had to upgrade the rims, put the 18 inch rims on there, made the boat just kind of makes that white boat just pop, having those kind of black off rims to offset it. Just looks phenomenal, man. Check that thing out. We have to look at it for a long time. That thing looks good. Well, we got to we got to take advantage of this because we only got a week of it, and it's gonna have a wrap with all my sponsors on top of it, which I appreciate the sponsors for sure. We all do. We couldn't be out here without them. But just look at how pretty it is unwrapped. Thing's beautiful. 